Uh, we're Joel Neer and Lin Shu Li, and this is our final project presentation for Biomedical Engineering 462 Medical Instrumentation at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. The project we chose to go with was computer control with electrooculography. Electrooculography measures the signal created by eye movements. Uh, the eyes behaves like a dipole. It has a positive charge on a pupil and negative charge on a retina. When your eye moves to the left, it, it creates a slightly positive on the left and negative on the right. Uh, it has a frequency range of 0 to 30 Hz. Usually, uh, most of the useful frequency are below 10 Hz. Uh, the AC signal strength has a 0.1 millivolts to 1 millivolts. Our project goal is to establish a control method based on EOG to, con to control computer. Uh, use, eye, use eyes to ship between various cells within a 5x3 grid that is displayed on a monitor and implement a method for user to click on a selected shell. The purpose is to help the certain disabled people using computer. This will help them to uh, better uh, communicate with others and uh, be more uh, productive. These people include quadriplegics and motor neuron diseases such as the famous ALS. Previous research has shown different methods of uh, for signal control, there are AC control, DC control, and combined. AC control is a di discrete control. It detects the AC pause of the eye movement. DC control behaves uh, better in continuity. It has continuous control, but it has low resolution. The combined control ha uh, combines both AC, AC and DC to produce a better performance. So this is a system diagram for our EOG controlled computer mouse. Once we get a signal from the electrodes, the signal passes into an instrumentation amplifier. Once outside of this, the signal goes through a series of high-pass and low-pass filters. The frequency range that we desire is 0 to 10 Hz. The low-pass filter is fifth order, which means that it decays at a rate of 100 decibels per decade. Once the signal passes through these filters, it's then sent into a programmable gain amplifier. The reason for this name is that the gain can be controlled through a potentiometer in the circuit. All of these blocks, the instrumentation amplifier, the high-pass and low-pass filters, and the programmable gain amplifier exist on a PCB that was custom created in Eagle. Once the signal passes out of the programmable gain amplifier, it gets sent to the Arduino, where the Arduino converts it from an analog signal to a digital signal, before sending it over the serial port to be processed in LabVIEW. The total gain of our system is roughly 2,419. This is the full electrode setup for our system. Our system uses five electrodes, two for the vertical axis. You have an electrode that goes above one of the eyes and below one of the eyes. There's two for the horizontal axis, which sit on either side of the face. And there's one electrode that drives the body to 2.5 volts. The reason for this is that the Arduino microcontroller can only read in analog values from 0 to 5 volts. So by establishing a baseline of 2.5 volts, this gives us a 2.5 volt range on both sides of this baseline that our signal can exist upon. On the bottom of the screen you see a diagram of the electrode placement and on the right you see the electrodes actually in action. Once we have the signal into LabVIEW we need to determine what the user is doing. If they're looking left, looking right, blinking, looking up or down. Um, on the horizontal axis the signal looks like a negative pulse for when the user looks left. When the user looks right we have a positive pulse. The vertical axis is much more complicated because on the vertical axis we also have a double blink which will correspond to a user clicking. This double blink signal is similar in magnitude and even a little bit shape to when the signal that happens when the user looks up. When the user looks down we achieve a negative pulse. So this image is a shot showing Lin Shu about to demo our EOG controlled computer mouse. On the left you can see the computer screen. On this screen you see a 3x5 grid of LEDs. Um, currently the center LED is illuminated, but as we play the video, Lin Shu is going to be calling out which direction he's moving his eyes. And you'll see that that LED that's illuminated moves along with what he says. Um, above the LED grid you also see a white bulb. This bulb will flash red whenever Lin Shu says that he blinks. Just one thing to note briefly, is that normally Lin Shu would be facing the screen when he's using this program. Because of this, um, as a user, when we see him look right, 
it's he's actually looking left. So we'll start the video now. Left, left, blink, up, down, right, right, blink, up, blink, left, right, blink. As you can see, the system works fairly well. Within that video, there was one error. Um, when he said he was looking left, the system also moved down. And the reason for this is not necessarily that the signal is malfunctioning. It's that this system actually requires kind of a learning curve. Uh, if you think about it, when you look left, sometimes you might be slightly looking up or looking down. So when you use the system, you, you really need to focus on what you're doing. Um, this would obviously become easier with practice, but it's just something to touch on now. On screen now is the full Arduino code that's used for our system. Although it might look complicated, it's actually very simple. The red box on the right contains the main loop of the program. All it does is it reads in values from the analog pins, which is where, which is where the PGA of our circuitry outputs to the Arduino. It samples these, these values and then sends them over the serial port to the computer. On the left side of the screen, you just see a setup within that orange box. So the first thing that needs to be set up is the serial port. This is necessary to actually communicate between the Arduino and the computer. Um, the second large block of code within that box is setting up a timer. This timer is set up to generate interrupts at one kilohertz. Every time an interrupt happens is when we know when to read the analog signal in and send it to the computer. So now on to LabVIEW. Once the signal passes into LabVIEW, there's several things we have to do to actually get the signal ready before we detect waveforms from it. The first is that we need to convert the signal from the 0 to 1023 range that the Arduino sends to the computer into a range of 0 to 5 volts. Second block here just adds additional gain to the signal and also adjusts the baseline. Then there is a filter to remove frequencies above 10 Hz. This gets rid of all of the power line frequency that would normally cause noise within a system. Finally, we just have an averager, which averages over 10 samples to smooth the signal. Now on to waveform detection. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on this section because it's fairly complicated, and I'd like to really convey what's going on here. Once the signal has been filtered and amplified, the next step is to detect if any of the waveforms that were shown in the previous slide occur. This is done by examining if the current signal exceeds certain thresholds. The code on the screen is a case structure which can detect if the user looks left or right. If the user looks right, the signal will be greater than 4, and the true portion of the case structure will be executed. Once inside, Boolean logic is first used to determine if the signal is in the process of crossing the threshold, or if it is already sitting above the threshold. If the signal has just crossed the threshold, then a wraparound counter is incremented. This counter has ranges from 0 to 4 and corresponds to which LED column contains the currently illuminated LED within the 3x5 grid. The false section of this case structure is shown at the bottom of the screen. Within this case structure, the signal is compared with the value of 1.5 volts, which is the threshold voltage for when the user looks left. A similar method is used for the vertical axis. The only difference is that the upper and lower thresholds are different, and also that the wraparound counter goes from 0 to 2 since there are only 3 rows in the LED grid. Now on to blink detection that is used for clicking. Click detection was the biggest hurdle that was faced in this project. This is because the signal for looking up is similar to the signal when the user blinks. In fact, every time the user looks up, the signal passes through the threshold range that corresponds to blinking. This threshold range is from 2.3 to 2.8 volts. This is slightly higher than the baseline for the vertical axis, which is 2 volts, and slightly lower than the threshold for looking up. Because of this, it was decided that the user would have to blink twice in succession for a click to occur. Once the signal first crosses into this threshold range corresponding to a blink, a timer is started. If the user is attempting to click, the signal will fall out of this threshold range and cross back into it again. A second time value is measured, and these two time values are compared. If the difference between these times is less than 250 milliseconds, then an output signal is set to 1, meaning that a click has occurred. Finally, onto the last section of this code, which is the LED display. The LED display consists of a 3x5 grid. 
Within this grid, only one LED can be on at one time. In order to achieve this, the signals of the counters, which correspond to the rows and the columns that are currently being illuminated, are passed through a significant amount of Boolean logic to determine which exact LED should be illuminated. So the results of the project were fairly promising. The system was shown that it can effectively be used to shift between cells in a, in a grid. Um, in our case, the grid was 3x5, but in reality, you could increase that grid to whatever size you want. Once the correct LED is illuminated, you can blink twice to detect a click. The final thing I wanted to mention is that there is a slight learning curve to using this system. Um, moving your eye solely left or only right without moving it up or down is, is something that takes getting used to. The future work of our project is to develop a specific user interface that implements the grid operation. Also, we need a MOS driver to implement all the code we have. We are also considering place, all, place electrodes on the glasses or masks so that we can integrate everything into one part. It provides more effectively and more efficient electrode placement. More research needs to be done to use dry electrodes instead of the silver silver chloride electrodes we have right now. We need to test the effectiveness of dry electrodes on EOG application. Uh, also, we need to increase our precision of our algorithm to get a better result to achieve better control. If this signal recognition algorithm is made more precise, it might reduce the time of that learning curve. So that wraps up our project. Thanks for listening.